last session, week eight, obey, and this is a, an exciting topic because we're we're leading up to really walking in the spirit, obeying God in every area of our life, and so we want to obey what He wants us to do. God has a plan for our life. He has a a destiny in mind. We said this: we're partnering with God to extend His kingdom through an intimate, ongoing relationship with Him, and. The, in, in, in prior weeks, we've been talking about how to cultivate a continual inner awareness of God's presence in our life, how to, how to continually uh, walk in the Spirit, how to continually be uh, aware that God is leading, guiding, and directing in every area of our life. And, and we've been learning how to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, and we've been learning how to wait on the Lord to be renewed in our in our inner person. We've been learning how to be still in His presence. We've been learning how to celebrate. So all that we've been learning is leading up to this idea that we have a walk, that, that we are to obey, that we're to uh, actually accomplish something that He has for us. And so we're partnering with Him to extend His kingdom, to to so the whole idea of obey is in my th thinking and in and in what we're going to talk about is walking with him. The idea of obeying him. The idea of obeying what he said. Obeying what he's leading us to. Obeying what he wants us to accomplish. And so that's where we're going to step out and do what God said. Let's read what Jesus said. If you love me, obey my commandments. Meaning it starts with love. And it starts with this relationship, but it, it, it works its way out in uh, obeying what God says. So we're obeying God's word and we're obeying the Spirit's leading. I think it's very clear that there's, there's a, a multi-level part to this, that we're, we're obeying what God says in his word and we're also responding to the Spirit's leading. And so this is very critical that as we are receiving God's love and enjoying God's love and experiencing God's love, that what we're doing is we're setting ourselves up to walk with Him. If being is knowing Him, then doing is walking with Him. And so what we want to do is walk out our faith through obedience. We want to we want to launch out and do what God says. We want to accomplish what God has for each of our lives. Now we know all of that goes clear back to surrender. So no matter how we, we run this, it's always going to start with us surrendering our will over to God's will. That's where obedience starts. It starts clear back in that very moment where we're surrendering our life to His, when we recognize our life's not our own. If you read through the surrender prayer in here, it basically makes the statement, my life's not my own. So once we've given it up, we're ready now to walk out our life in obedience, out uh, of walking with the Spirit. This should be the most exciting part of our relationship with Him, is getting to know God and being obedient to Him. That's where we, we connect with Him when we're obeying. That's where the relationship is the most alive when we're walking. We're not doing it in our own strength. Philippians 2, 13 says, he not only gives us the desire in the NLT, it says it this way, not only desire, but the power to please him. As we're meditating on his word and as we're getting to know him intimately in our inner man and as we're hearing his voice, there's a walking out of our faith through obedience. There's a stepping out on the water. When Peter stepped out on the water, it was out of obedience and he stood on the water. There was power there to keep him up. He was in obedience to what Jesus wanted him to do. When we're in obedience to what God wants to do, he is there with us to empower us, to strengthen us, to, to cause that thing to happen. James tells us it's not just listening to God's word, but it's also doing what it says. When we know what's right to do, that's what we obey. That's what we do. That's what we uh, 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 commit ourselves to. There are three keys to obedience that I can see. One is hearing God's voice through his word and the Holy Spirit. 
there, there are some practical things God's going to lead you to that come from the voice of the Spirit for that day. There's the things that God tells us in His Word that are clear that we're to obey and we're to do. And then there's the discerning God's timing for every situation. Now, there's timing in everything. So we not only want to be able to hear His voice, but we want to be able to discern the timing when it's right, when it's right to accomplish that thing that he's saying. So if he wants us to accomplish something, wants us to uh, accomplish this thing, we also need to know the timing, when he wants us to do it. And that again goes back to hearing, responding to what he's saying. But it's all about obeying, moving in what he says and what he wants us to do. And then it's having the boldness to step out in faith and do what is being asked of us to do. I have a little story that I like to share at this point, and it, 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 of course, meeting with the Lord in the morning and hearing His voice and, 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 and desiring to follow His word, all of those things. Practically, though, I was at a funeral, and I remember sitting in the funeral, and I remember being in there, and I was just listening to the Holy Spirit, and Though I felt the Spirit of God say, the man was a good Samaritan, and I want you to go up and tell the people that he was a good Samaritan. So, so in this whole dynamic of obedience, uh, there's, this, there's this idea of hearing. So I hear this thought in my mind, go up, and so I told it to my wife because I was intimidated because they put us at, we were late, and they put us at the back of the church. And so I had to meander up through all those people, it was a church I wasn't familiar with. It was a people I wasn't familiar with. But I had heard God's voice, I, I, or I thought I did. So my wife wasn't even sitting next to me, sitting behind me, because there were no seats left, and the place was packed out. And so I remember telling her, I think he told me to go up there and, and, and to share that he's a good Samaritan. And, and then I turned back, and I'm, she's behind me, and I'm just thinking, I should go up there. And the Lord keeps saying, you should be obedient. Follow me. Go up there. Do what, do what I'm asking you to do. And I kept making it. You never know when you're about to do something for God that all these excuses come to your mind. Like, like you're, like, because this is a moment where you're about to step out in faith and do something from a prompting of the Spirit and, and do something that's going to have an impact on others and impact on that family. And even my presence up there as a neighbor may have ministered to the wife. I'm not sure exactly all the reasons God wanted me up there, but he wanted me to obey. And my wife's tapping me on the shoulder. Get up there. They're going to shut this thing down. You better get up there. And I remember just frozen, listening to the excuses, just just. Just, it's too crowded, it's too far to go. I don't think my voice will be important. I always hear these voices that aren't the God voice that we talked about earlier, hearing his frequency. It's all the condemning voices. It's the, it's the things that try to thwart us from stepping out in faith and obeying God and getting on the water like Peter and doing something that's out of faith because it's faith that pleases God. It's, it's the obedience with faith. It's faith It's it's, that unlocks this obedience that brings us into a dimension that God wants to use us in this world. He wants to unleash his power. And, and for me, his power was as simple as get up there. Well, I talked myself out of it. I remember the pastor up there said, I'm going to wait one more minute. Is there anyone else that wants to come up? Now, I'd like to tell you a story that I jumped up right then, ran up there, spoke about the Good Samaritan, obeyed, and, and uh, all was well, and I felt like a hero. No, I just waited one more minute, and as the time passed, she said, okay, now we're going to move on. And the minute she said we're going to move on, I got sick to my stomach because I realized in that moment I didn't have the boldness to step up and step out in faith and do what God was saying to do. So I'm, I'm just remorsing, more condemnation, more guilt, more woe is me, and I'm, I'm driving off and I'm thinking about it. The Lord says, do you want to know the secret of obedience? 
As I'm driving, I hear his voice say, do you want to know the secret of obedience? And you missed it today. I said, I would love to know. And it's what I shared with you. It's one, it's hearing God's voice. It's knowing that it's him. It's knowing that that is God's voice and no other voice. It's knowing that that lines up with the word of God, that I was going up there to bless that guy. I was going up there to minister. I wasn't going up there for myself. And, and so it's one, you've got to have the, to obey. You've got to have the capacity to hear. You have to know what you're being asked to do because all of this is coming out of a relationship. Remember, we know what to do in standards. We know what not to do, what we should do. But how about the leading of the Spirit, knowing what to do daily, what to do, what, who to call, when to call them, all of those things that require steps of obedience. Then he said the second thing isn't just hearing, it's knowing my timing. You have a window of time. To, Peter had a window of time to step out of that boat. It wasn't for the next day. It wasn't the day before. He hadn't heard the voice yet. It was that day that God was asking him to step out of that boat and onto that water. Now, he did walk across to see the winds and get a little fearful, and he did drop down. Jesus helped him up. I get that there's a whole dynamic that's going on that's teaching us and we're growing in, but he had to know that it was that moment. And, and, and that moment was the window that they were opening that up for me to go up there and just share a few thoughts what the Lord had given me for that man's life, to bless that wife and to bless that family, to fill in the gaps of all the, no one else shared about his Good Samaritan acts. But I realized there was a third part, a missing part, that I didn't implement that day to obey. And Paul prays for boldness that he would share. Paul actually requested prayer for boldness because he knew at any moment he could be intimidated by the enemy to try to thwart him from stepping out and obeying. We're in that battle constantly. So the next step is having the boldness to obey at the moment God is wanting that to happen in that moment. Sometimes it's just putting my arm around my kid and telling them I love them. Sometimes it's just, it's just a text to somebody. I, I understand it's all little things, big things. It's, it's in principles too of what we should and shouldn't do. It's all those things that we need boldness to even overcome temptation. We need to step. To me, this is exciting to learn these three steps in obedience, hearing, understanding the timing, and stepping out in boldness to do what God asks. True faith produces obedience. It produces obedience. If we're, if we're walking in faith, we're going to obey. We're going to, we're going to obey what he says. To me, this is, this is walking with God. If we were able to hear then we must be willing to obey. There's two parts to this. If we can hear, then he's going to bring us into leading us and then we're going to need to obey in that in moving into what he has for us. This is how we walk in the Spirit as described in Galatians 5.25. Now let me read this. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our life. Now I love this because it's talking about cadence, military term, talking about staying in step with the Spirit. God wants us to stay in step with him. <laughs> That's why we meet with him in the morning. So we tune our ear to his frequency. So we get his word freshly grafted in us. So we get it working. So we stir up and we receive manna for the day and grace for the moment. And, and it can be as, as, as powerful as just not reacting. You'll find yourself not reacting and that's walking in obedience. It might be, and it's transformational because as we're walking in this obedience, we're being transformed by the renewing of our mind. Our obedience demonstrates we are in a dynamic, ongoing relationship with the creator of the universe. This demonstrates that we're in this dynamic relationship, that he's actually speaking to us, that we're actually walking with him, that we're actually uh, accomplishing things for him on this earth, that he has a plan for us and we're actually accomplishing his purposes, extending his kingdom. We are called as believers to walk with God. This is what makes the Christian life so exciting, that we're actually walking with God. 
Nothing brings more fulfillment than the intimacy and closeness we have with our Heavenly Father and our Lord Jesus Christ as we walk with Him in obedience. Well, we've just made it through nine weeks and you're on your second 40-day worship challenge. Let me pray a blessing on you and as we end this series and we end this teaching and we end this uh, time together. I just want to pray God's blessing on your life. And if we're in class, we always anoint people with oil. We bless them. We just want the best for them. And, and from my heart to yours, I want the best for your life. And I know the best comes out of your time with him. All I want to do is point you to a closer walk with God that you can experience his love, his pleasure, his grace, his favor, his tender mercies, his kindness. I want all for you that God wants for you. I want you to live a full life in hearing his voice, discerning the timing of things and walking in obedience, to walk with him. As Adam and Eve walked in the garden before the fall, God's inviting us back into that walk. I know we have conflict with sin. I know we're waging. I didn't go into all the conflicts and the warfare. And I know you're in it. I'm in it. We can't take a vacation from it. We're in it. But I know God has a wonderful plan for your life. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for each person who's listened to this teachings and this seminar and has gone through the 40-day worship challenge with you and who's on their second one day nine. Lord, I just thank you for each person. I thank you for their heart. I thank you for their life. I thank you for everything you're doing in them. I thank you for everything you're doing through them. I pray that these words would be spirit and life to them, a blessing. I pray, Lord, that their walk with you would be enriched in the days ahead beyond what they could ever have imagined. I pray, Lord, for the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow. I pray for those that came into this and were under attack and you have been a fortress and a shield to them and they found refuge in you. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness and kindness. I thank you that your love is patient and kind and that you are everything to us. That if, that if, that before we do anything, we have everything. Before we ever set out to accomplish anything that you have us to do, we're full. We're not working for the blessing, we're working from it, we're in you. God, I just thank you for each person. I pray for your divine favor on their life. Lord, anoint them today, because uh, anoint them today with your power, and your love and your grace, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, glad we could be together for these nine weeks, it's been awesome. I just wish you the best and know God is leading your life. Enjoy his presence and his love, in Jesus' name, bless you, amen.